over the last week so too many messages have gone in and these messages are out of love when love unites with awareness understanding is born because of your love the message is important to be given on this day i will speak in general about certain terminology it is said holy prophet was omni or illiterate nanak abandoned the normal ways and means of education his father sent him to a teacher the teacher was teaching him he asked normally when we say alphabet it is started a and ends with z the urdu language begins with letter alif so when the teacher said alif he asked what alif means what is the meaning of alif and if you cannot explain the meaning of the letter alif how can i move ahead the teacher found that he was irrational so he brought him back he said he cannot teach him in the same way when he was taught the numbers he said one tell me what is the meaning of one one ever asked the meaning of letters and numbers but none of it ram paramhans was illiterate the letter letters are used to form a word and grammar is used to form a sentence using different words then you have to understand the whole process of grammar singular plural male female genders and so many things the entire process the man who is the man of letters or degrees is considered to be a wise man in 2009 i had a series of talks at harvard university in one of the talks i mentioned that the there is something missing in our dimension of education and that missing dimension in the education is meditation we spend nearly 25 to 27 years of our precious life in university campuses when we finish those premium years in the university campus we are given honors and degrees and we are told that you are now ready to plunge into the world of world outside after spending 25 27 years of our precious life when we enter into the institute of life do we have simple questions do we have answers to the simple question that life asks on a day to day basis no we do not that means there is something basically wrong in our education and that something when i say that we should go back to the ancient system of education where the student spends time in the company of the master and learn he is not given any degree but he gains wisdom the purpose of education is to gain wisdom not degrees but in the world that we live in degrees are important when we hear that holy prophet was illiterate or ummi or nanak was illiterate or ram krishna was illiterate they were illiterate in the sense of the worldly education they did not have any official degrees but they have something which is more than which even all the degrees that are conferred upon you cannot best to you the awareness Hindu seers they are called seers seers means one who sees mantra drishta one who can envision the world envision the world to see the world seeing is the first and the foremost thing when you see a word written immediately an image comes into your mind when you see a word written chair or table just a word is written an entire image comes into your mind so you are actually seeing the world in it, in all its inner and outer dimension university education only gives you the outer dimension not the inner and when you understand the inner dimension then there comes innocence purity of heart awareness and these are the three essentials of knowing or learning 
without these the clarity does not come and you will not be able to understand the deeper messages you do not have the understanding you have only out understanding but there is no purity there is no innocence and there is no awareness by saying that holy prophet was illiterate it means that he was not well versed in the outer dimension but he was pure at heart he was innocent like a child now with all our learning university education the dietitians and experts cannot even say what is beneficial for a child and what is not but when you put the all kinds of food in front of an infant the infant will pick up only that food which is beneficial for him psychologists have confirmed this and if the child is sick he will pick up only that food which is beneficial to him during time when he is suffering from that particular ailment but slowly and slowly we destroy this capacity and impose things from outside education is something when it is imposed on you from outside your this is what your university does it your priestly your religious systems religious custodians priest and family does it to you they do not allow the natural growth nanak holy prophet ramkrishna paramans all these went through the natural process of growing into awareness they are not well versed in the grammar but whatever he says forms a grammar now people whenever people used to ask nanak any question or anything he had two disciples one was hindu and the other was muslim he will tell him to start the music and he will start singing and entire message is he had sung the entire message it's not a philosophy he started a language which is known as gurumukhi guru means master mukh means mouth that which comes out of the mouth of the master is the language of the scriptures it is not hebrew it is not arabic or persian the language of the scriptures is that which comes out of the mouth of the master you cannot master it through the ordinary ways and means punjabi language is different than the language that nanak used there is a particular incident in hindu ways there was a saint sage called kodala he had his son shwet ketu he sent his son to a particular teacher to learn the son spent many years after that the master said you have learned all the scriptures you have known everything you can go back home shwet ketu is returning home and when he is returning home his father saw him returning from the window a man of knowledge the so called letters he is very arrogant look at him when he walks look at him how he displays his degrees you ask him his name he said he says i am doctor i am this i am that the real knowing is knowing thyself man arfa nafsahu arfa rabbahu know thyself is the only criteria once you know the yourself once you have explored your innerness then the outer dimensions and degrees are not important i underwent the university education as such in the normal way and almost 20 years ago i destroyed all my certificates and degrees because they have not helped me in any way and i do not need them so in that sense of the worldly education 
I have no proof of my education. I am unlettered. When he saw him, Shwetketu coming, father came out. He touched the feet of his father and he said, I am. I have finished my education. Now the master said, Father said, you have not learned any. Knowledge brings you humility, humble. Look at the tree that is laden with fruits. Its branches bows down. The more degrees a man has, the more arrogant he becomes. In that sense, the word Ummi is used in Islamic tradition. He was happy returning home that father will be happy that I have finished my education. Now the father tells him, you have to go back to the master and tell him to teach all that cannot be taught. Meditation is something which cannot be taught. I cannot teach you meditation. But you can catch the the essence, the essentials of meditation in the company of someone that you are, the wisdom in the company of a wise person. So he goes to the master and he says, My father said I have not learned anything and he asked me to, to tell you to teach me all that which cannot be learned. The master said that is a totally a different dimension of education, different dimension of learning. To know all that cannot be known, then he says, look, these are hundred cows. You take them, go deep into the woods and stay there until these cows multiply into one thousand. He was a man of letters, a man of letters is always anxious to teach the other. You have heard something from me. Before it becomes part of your own growth, you are ready to tell others. You take my words and quote them to others. All that my words has, your words do not. Emerge from deep within. You have not allowed that thing. It's like you like a flower, you pick it up and you want to take the flower and plant it. But the flower, when you take a flower, it may have a stem. But when you plant in the flower pot, it will not. Roots are essential. It has to attain to its natural growth. You cannot force on the growth of a plant and force the flowers to come. Plant takes its natural growth from a seed. It becomes a seedling, seedling to a tender plant. Tender plant when begins to grow, its stem gains its strength. And when the stem gains its strength, new branches, foliage comes. After some time, the buds begin to appear, buds blossom into a flower, flower spreads its beauty and fragrance. This is the process of inward journey. This is how the learning happens. Shwet Ketu, he was well versed in the scriptures, chant the scriptures in a chronological order chant the scriptures in a chronological order, but he does not know what is the meaning of Alhamdulillah, he does not know the meaning of that. But he can recite it more beautifully than me. So he sat down under the tree and he started giving discourses. He gathered the cows, animals, birds and he started giving the discourses on the scriptures. Then slowly and slowly he realized that these animals, these birds, these trees do not understand the language. Am I a fool to give the discourses to these? Slowly and slowly he became silent. Something that was arrogant, that was trying to force him to exhibit his knowledge became satiated. He became so silent that even when he sat in, in a particular posture, 
that even birds will come and sit on him grass begin to grow around him time flowed on the cows multiplied and became 1000 then one day and shwet ketu forget all about time and space he was in a inner state of innocence and purity holy prophet when he entered in communion with allah subhanahu wa taala as it is said he was he has attained to that inner purity and innocence that there was no obstructions of his own he was totally silent and when you reach to that state of meditation whatsoever appears in front of you becomes godly it is said about nanak Nanak's ways and means were weird, and they are very similar to that of Holy Prophet. One day, in a cold winter night, Nanak was sitting on the bank of River Bain, along with his disciple Bala and Mardana. All of a sudden, Nanak took off his clothes. The Bala asked, "What are you doing? The night is cold, wintry night. Water is cold. What are you doing?" Nanak did not say anything. he simply took out his clothes and entered the river the disciple thought that nanak will take a dip and come back time passed nanak did not come he started running on the river bank calling him where are you answer me but there was no answer from nanak he ran to the village he told the people that so and so happened nanak disappeared in the river although the bud has not blossomed but bud has its own beauty everyone loved nanak although he has weird means they ran to the river bank they searched the river but they could not find no trace of nanak anywhere everyone lamented and thought that maybe nanak's body has been drifted or he drowned or some animal has eaten him the story says i say a story because it has a deeper meaning three days after nanak appeared from the river and it is said that he was in the company of god he saw his beloved in front of his eyes heart's quest was fulfilled quest was satiated nanak attained to that which was his yearning of years and when he came out of the river japji was his message ek omkar satnam that which is is one it is existential omkar swaroop that is his message whenever anyone attains to that state whenever he enters into the state of meditation he becomes the people forget him if you are meditating deeply into a corner people will miss you that this person is sitting he becomes useless for the outer world holy prophet attained to that state in meditation in marakma and in that state of purity and innocence the wisdom dawned on him and for 22 years he continued that meditation when you will come out of that meditation do not take it literally otherwise you will remain a simply a muslim you will not attain to the awareness of holy prophet if you understand the story of nanak as it is you will simply remain a sikh but you will not attain to the awareness of nanak if you understand the message of shwet ketu you will simply remain a letter you will simply remain a philosopher and they are available dying a dozen you will not attain to the masterhood you will not attain to the awakening these because the message is so deep it has to be given in parables in stories and stories hang around our consciousness that is why sufis use parables zen use cones riddles are used to explain that which cannot be explained and when shwet ketu was returning 
the masters came out and he saw and he told his disciples, Look, one thousand and one cows are coming. Shwet Ketu has become insane. When Sufis use the green color and animal as a symbol, it is the innocence of the animal is used as a symbol. Animals are embodiment of innocence, a child is embodiment of innocence. And this is the reason that the Islamic tradition speaks of Holy Prophet as illiterate Ummi. Nanak did not learn the ways and means of the outer world. Shwet Ketu, Ram Krishna, the message over the time innumerable messages poured in to celebrate the birthday of Tao Shobuddha. It is difficult, it was indeed difficult to respond to each. Decided to put your love united with my awareness and let this become the message. Each individual has two aspects. First and the foremost is the formless. This is known as being or consciousness of God element or Paramatma or Allah. It is formless. It is eternal, indestructible, blissful, yet all pervading beyond any boundary. It is beyond birth, death, pain, pleasure, relation, thus all that comes within the known dimension. Shankar has called this aspect as Shiva. And when it comes to Shankar, one of his most beautiful composition is known as Bhaj Govindam, Seek Eternal. Shankar was traveling, walking through the lanes in the city of Varanasi in India, where he lived along with his disciples. He saw an old man, haggard, no teeth in his mouth, cheeks have sunk in, the belly and the stomach was merging into one another, hoary headed, almost ready to go into the graves. What he was trying to remember, learn, the famous grammar of Panini. Grammar is required for language. Grammar is required for forming a sense. Seeing him in that state, in that state of life and trying to remember the grammar, he sang the verses, the compassion of Shankar. Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Govindam, Murmate, Samprapte Sannihite Kale, Nahi Nahi Rakshat Dukrishkar. What shall you gain, O fool, by remembering the grammar? Seek eternal. Seek that which is never born, never born. That is a growth within. This is the formless. Holy Prophet embodies that formlessness. That's why we do not have his images. The Hindu seers have no images. Buddha has no image. And whatever image we see, it is the imagination of the sculpturists and painters and in all those images he, his face is shown as Chinese. Symbolically, his hair is shown in a particular way that I will speak another time. The other aspect is form. This is bound by time and space, death and birth, known and unknown. Your body is such element of your total existence. Body comes into existence with the interaction of ovum and sperm. But that which enters the body is formless. For the continuation of the process of evolution and transformation of human consciousness, the formless enters form on a particular moment as birth and then dissolves into the eternal again in a moment as death. The purpose of life is to allow the form to attain its formless essence while living in the world of objects and beings. Through meditation, self-discovery, the form begins to dissolve into the unknown drop by drop 
like the river merging into the ocean. This is the beginning or one shore of enlightenment. When the form dissolves into totality, in all its component, then another miracle happens that completes the process of enlightenment or provides the other shore of totality, other shore for totality to manifest as you traverse through life's roads. Of the form begins and then completes is known as fana, total dissolution. And then ocean lends its magnanimity, totality and quality to the drop. The drop that once belonged to a particular river, Thames, Hudsanges, Nile, is no more identified by that name. It is known as a drop from the ocean. It has the quality of the ocean. It is saltish. Drop and ocean are one, then, and exist in their macro and micro forms. Ocean is macro and drop is micro. In that awareness, a Jesus becomes the Son of God. He is no more identified as the Son of Man anymore. This aspect, when drop becomes whole of ocean, is Baka. When Fana and Baka are complete, one can exist both as form and formless, if that be necessary. This is the miracle of existence. He exists, yet he does not. Nanak exists, but he does not exist for you. Holy Prophet does not exist for you, but he exists for his beloved. A man who is in meditation, if you are sitting down, your presence will not create any hindrance for anyone. Everyone will become oblivious of your presence because you are lost into your own being so much that everyone has forgotten you. This used to happen with Ravindranath Tagore. He had, his fa father had 13 children and the family was a joint, very big. Nobody knows if Ravindra is inside the house or not. It is such a big family and big campus that nobody knows who is in and who is not. One who attains this state is enlightened. However, all enlightened ones cannot be the master. Even after enlightenment, such a person remains within the narrow boundaries of religion, following the basic rituals, etc. And his teachings remain encased within that fold. There is no trace of beyond. After enlightenment, one who lives in a state of beyond the known and knowable is indeed a master. The energy field of the master is beyond time and space, like rain cloud it showers equally on all. The only difference remains if you have covered yourself with the umbrella of narrowness, you will remain unaffected. To feel the grace of the master, no physical proximity is needed. Only the purity and innocence of awareness is needed and it works beyond time and space. This is ultimate. Then life continues between the two shores of Fana and Bhakti like a river bed. This is beyond enlightenment and is seen. Barefooted and naked of breast, I mingle with the people of the world. My clothes are ragged and dust laden and I am ever blissful. I use no magic to extend my life. Now before me even the trees become alive. Anybody, whosoever used to come in the company of Shah Bahauddin Naqshbandrazillah Ta'ala he used to initiate. Inside my gate a thousand sage, inside my gate a thousand sages know me not. The beauty of my garden is invisible. Why should one search the footprints of the patriarch? I go to the marketplace with my wine bottle and return home with my staff. I visit the wine shop and the market and everyone I look upon becomes enlightened.
Love you all. This is the message.